ocio. Okay, you know, we have this going on. This war uh, between Russia and Ukraine. But, we, you know, you got Russia threatening with nukes and, and things and what have you. And with all this going on, it's not just uh, Russia that we're going to end up being involved in, with in a, in a world war. It's going to be China and a few other countries. However, what I'm going to try to cover and, and help as much as I can about uh, surviving, you know, a nuclear attack. Okay, uh, this information I have is from a, a military uh, survival guide, uh, you know, that was issued back in 92. And um, I, I'd like to share some of this information with you. And what I don't cover tonight, I will try uh, another time. To, on a next uh, live stream to cover this, you know, um, a little bit more. Okay, first of all, a lot of you know uh, and can find any kind of information about the different types of uh, nuclear weapons they are. And uh, anyway... Yeah, excuse me, I'm tired and sore, and I'm going to be grunting and moaning just like an old fart, okay? All right, the, the one thing that is important to remember is uh, when you have a nuclear attack, or you have different ranges of, you know, you can have within, a, you know, like a, a, think of it as like a target. You know, you see a, a, a target, for target practice, you have the center and then, you know, the bullseye and then the, the rings, all right? Think of the ground zero, all right, within uh, a mile or more. I mean, that's, you know, real bad, all right? And then uh, then you have like seven miles out, you know, you're, you're uh, you know, and then like, think, uh, and then 12 miles. All right, uh, now they, they got uh, a lot more powerful weapons now, so you probably have even think of it, uh, might even have a bigger range on the effects uh, of from ground zero. All right, so, all right, let's say you're not at ground zero because you're at ground zero, first of all, it's not likely you're going to survive that at all, okay? But, uh, so the thing is, if you know and hear about um, an uh, attack, you know, coming, the best thing to do is, first of all, forget about first trying to get into your vehicle and try to get out, because uh, you're not going to get nowhere. Traffic jams. Those people are dead. Okay, anyone who gets caught out like that, you, you, you're in a traffic jam, and yeah, all right, but I'm hoping, though, with this information, it will help you, okay? You, you can find all kinds of information about nuclear weapons, their capabilities, what they can do, the, the range, okay, but here is a... a, a principle that you should remember is that all right to survive you got to think about shielding now you know some of you, if you can get under in a, in a basement a bomb shelter or something that's a plus there okay but let's say maybe you're out in the woods or you're hiking uh and this stuff happens first of all if, if there's a a, a flash you know, uh, don't don't look at it. I mean, you might see it through the peripheral, but don't look directly at it. Uh, and if by 
happens and you accidentally look and that you're looking in that direction and it happens okay um you need to look away quick as soon as that happens because otherwise you you might be blinded just temporarily uh but you you will get your eyesight back but if you look at it too long you know just you know, and you're saying, you might be just bigger. You, you're going to be blind permanently. But anyway, getting back to what I was talking about, shielding. Uh, and I'm sharing to you from this um, manual, okay? All right. Um, said that uh, shielding actually works by absorbing or weakening the penetrating radiation thereby reducing the amount of radiation reaching your body the denser the material the better the shielding effect lead iron concrete and water are good examples of shielding material all right now they have on uh, special medical aspects all right the presence of fallout material in your area requires slight changes in first aid procedures okay <clears throat> all right you must cover all wounds listen to this carefully let you must cover all wounds to prevent contamination and the entry of radioactive particles you must first wash burns of beta radiation, then treat them as ordinary burns. Take extra measures to prevent infection. Your body will be extremely sensitive to infections due to changes in your blood chemistry. Pay close attention to the prevention of colds or respiratory uh, infections. Rigorously practice personal hygiene to prevent infections. Cover your eyes with improvised goggles to prevent the entry of particles. Got to protect your eyes, guys. Got to remember that. All right, shelter. Now, this is something important. All right, so listen up, all right. Uh... Uh, it says here, as stated earlier, the shielding materials effect and effectiveness on its thickness and density. An example thickness of shielding material will reduce the level of radiation to negligible amounts. Okay. Um, the primary reason for finding and building a shelter is to get Protection against the high intensity radiation levels of early gamma fallout as fast as possible. Five minutes to locate the shelter is a good guide. Speed is finding shelter is absolutely essential. Without shelter, the dosage received in the first few hours will exceed that received during the rest of a week in a contaminated area. The dosage received in the first week will exceed the dosage accumulated during the rest of a lifetime spent in the same contaminated area. Now, mind you, this manual was for, uh, also, for, you know, mainly it was for soldiers, okay? But, you know, I mean, this is 1992, you know, of course, uh, I'm sure that there are um, army surplus stores, that you you know, military surplus stores where you can go and you, you probably find one. Uh, maybe one even up uh, for year 2000 or whatever, but remember this for soldiers out in the field but see this will help you also you got to remember this um shielding materials the thickness required 
to weaken gamma radiation from fallout is far less than that needed to shield against initial gamma radiations. Fallout radiation has less energy. You hear that? It has less energy than a nuclear detonation's initial radiation. Um, for fallout radiation, a re relatively small amount of shielding material can provide adequate protection. Okay. Um, Let's see here. And uh, I don't know if you can see that real good. Right there, see that illustration? You might have to pause it to read it. Pay real close attention to it. All right. Uh, this shows you the thickness of materials to reduce gamma, gamma radiation, okay? Uh, the, it says here, the principle of half value layer thickness is useful in understanding the absorption of gamma radiation by various materials. According to this principle, if five centimeters of brick, another half, vi half value layer, um, I lost my place. Okay, well, it will reduce the intensity by another half, namely to one fourth the original amount. 15 centimeters will reduce gamma radiation fallout levels to one eighth its original amount, 20 centimeters to the 16th, and so on. Thus, a shelter protected by one meter of dirt would reduce a radiation intensity of 1,000, I can't remember what CGYS is, you, but anyway, per hour on the outside to about 0 0.5 CGY uh, hour inside the shelter. I'm sorry, guys. I mean, I can't remember a lot of, you know, that I forget, but, you know, okay. Any of you that may be watching, know, uh, let me know, okay? Because I don't remember all that stuff anymore. Um, it says here, natural shelters, okay? Terrain that provides natural shielding and easy shelter construction is the ideal location for an emergency shelter. Good examples are ditches, ravines, rocky outcroppings, hills, and riverbanks. In level areas without natural protection, dig a fighting position or slit trench. Now remember, this was for uh, soldiers, but this is, will also help you, right? Uh, trenches. When digging trenches work from inside the trench as soon as it is large enough to cover part of your, part of your body, thereby not exposing all your body to radiation. In open country, try to dig the trench from a prone position stacking the dirt carefully and evenly around the trench. Okay, hold on, let me get this page turned. On level ground, the 
dirt around your body for additional shielding. Depending upon soil conditions, shelter construction time will vary from a few minutes to a few hours. If you dig as quickly as possible, you will reduce the dosage you receive. Remember that, guys. Um, and don't forget, you know, that you can get, uh, I don't forget what you call it. It's uh, tablets, you know, that help for your thyroid. Okay. Uh, that's something you, you, you know, maybe you consider seeing about getting now. Hey, it's a crazy world out here, right? Crazy. You know, when you got mad, crazy people out there who button happy and would like to push the button, this information is something that can help you survive, all right? It's better to have some chance and no chance. And so, this will give you a chance to survive, all right? Um other shelters while an underground shelter covered by one meter or more of earth provides the best protection against fallout radiation the following unoccupied structures in order listed uh, which it gives a list here offer the next best protection um Number one, caves and tunnels covered by more than one meter of earth. A storm or storage cellars. Culverts, uh, basements or cellars of abandoned buildings. Abandoned buildings made of stone or mud. Roofs. It is not mandatory that you build a roof on your shelter build one only if the materials are ready readily available with only a brief exposure to outside contamination if building a roof would require extended exposure to penetrating radiation it would be wiser to leave the shelter roofless a roof's sole function is to reduce radiation from the fallout source to your body. Unless you use a thick roof, a roof provides very little shielding. You can construct a simple roof from a poncho anchored down with dirt, rocks, or other refuse from your shelter. You can remove large particles of dirt and debris from the top of the poncho by beating it off from the inside at frequent intervals. This cover will not offer shielding from the radioactive particles deposited on the surface, but it will increase the distance from the fallout source and keep the shelter area from further contamination. Okay, and uh, let's see what else we got here. Now, I'm not going to be able to cover all this right now. I just wanted to share some of the, a little bit of this with you. Uh, this is a crazy world. And you got Putin, and you got China. And you got uh, that little crazy guy in North Korea and, and others around in this world, you know, that's got nukes and we just love just to have a field day with them. And you would hope they'd have enough sense not to use them, but unfortunately you're dealing with people that don't quite have their full faculties. They're not running on a full charge, you know. All right. Uh, shelter site selections and preparation. 
to reduce your exposure time and thereby reduce the dosage received, remember the following factors when selecting and setting up a shelter. One, where possible, seek a crude existing shelter and setting up a shelter. If none is available, dig a trench. That's one. Okay. Number two, dig the shelter deep enough to get good protection. Then enlarge it as required for comfort. Three, cover the top of the fighting position or trench with any readily available material and a thick layer of earth. If you can do so without leaving the shelter, that is. While a roof and camouflage are both desirable, it is probably safer to do without them than to expose yourself to radiation outside your position. All right, four. <laughs> While building your shelter, keep all parts of your body covered with clothing to protect it against beta burns. All right, six. And I'm probably getting these numbers all wrong. <laughs> Probably forgetting what number I'm on. But anyway, I'll just go on. Uh, next one. Uh, clean the shelter site of any surface depositing. Hold on. Let me read that again. Clean the shelter site of any surface deposit using a branch or object that you can discard. Do this cleaning to remove contaminated materials from the area you will occupy. The cleaned area should extend at least 1.5 meters beyond your shelter's area. You know, uh, one thing I, I hated and I still hate is metric. And Life of me, I can't remember what I you convert meters into yards and feet and all that, but y'all can look it up. Um, decontaminate any material, any materials you bring into your shelter. These materials include grass or foliage that you use as insulation or bedding and your outer clothing clothing especially footgear your shoes boots whatever if the weather permits and you have heavily contaminated outer clothing you may want to remove it um that's common sense and bury it no now check this out. Bury it under a foot of earth at the end of your shelter. You may retrieve it later after the radioactivity decays when leaving the shelter. If the clothing is dry, you may contaminate it by beating or shaking it outside the shelter's entrance to remove the radioactive dust. You may use any body of water, even though contaminated, to rid materials of excess fallout and particles. Simply dip the material into the water and shake it to get rid of the excess water. Do not wring it out. This action will trap the particles. Now you remember that. You note that. Okay. The next one. 
at all, if possible. Without leaving the shelter, wash your body thoroughly with soap and water, even if the water on hand may be contaminated. Now, remind you, this is about surviving, okay? I'll just think, all right, you have a soldier out in the field, or maybe you're out there uh, and hiking when all this stuff, you know, had, had hit, right? So you you want to uh, you you're just stuck in a situation there where it's either just die or survive. Well, this is to help you. All right, this washing will remove most of the harmful radiation, uh, radioactive particles that are likely to cause beta burns or other damage. Um, if water is not available, wipe your face and any other exposed skin surface to remove contaminated dust and dirt. So remember that. Um, you may wipe your face with a clean piece of cloth or a handful of con uncontaminated dirt. You get this uncontaminated dirt by scraping off the top few inches of soil and using the clean dirt. There you go. Uh, I have a couple more here I want to share with you. And then the next time I will share a little bit more. Okay. Upon completing the shelter, lie down, keep warm, and sleep and rest as much as possible, as possible, while in the shelter. When not resting, keep busy by planning future actions studying your maps or making the shelter more comfortable and effective don't panic if you experience nausea and symptoms of radiation sickness your main danger from radiation sickness is infection there is no first aid for this sickness Resting, drinking fluids, taking any medicine that prevents vomiting, maintaining your food intake, intake, and preventing additional exposure will help avoid infection and aid recovery. Even small doses of radiation can cause these symptoms which may disappear in a short time. Okay, uh, uh, next time I will cover about the exposures timetable. Okay, I thought I would uh, share this information with you. And, uh, and I'm hope that that little bit that I have shared will help you. So I want to say thank you for watching. And watch your six and keep tabs of the news with what's going on and because you never know I mean it could be tomorrow next next couple of days next week next month whenever that you're faced with the reality of nuclear attacks and you want to survive I mean who doesn't right so uh, I'm hoping that was helpful. And uh, that was that. Okay, so you be blessed in everything you do. And stay safe, stay warm, stay dry. And don't poo-poo off a nuclear attack, a threat. Because it's not if, it's, it's just when will it happen. It will happen. But when and 
the exact location, all this, no one knows. But you have to have a general idea of what to do in that event when it does happen. If you want to survive, and I don't know anybody who's not in the right mind who don't want to survive. So I'm hoping all this that I, I share will help you. And uh, I, I'm not a, a great speech writer. Uh, I'm not a great speaker, okay? But I do love people and I do care about you. And I hope that any information I can share with you help you out. All right, especially on this, because, uh, hey, the threat is real. We see how Putin has really went overboard. Went El Cuckoo. Yeah, so watch your six out there. And, hey, and if it's not nuclear attacks, you got uh, things like natural disasters even that are threats. So it's always good to always know what to do in certain situations to survive. So, keeping that in mind, just know that I care and I keep safe. All right. Good night, and I will see you later. Aho, and be blessed.